And we are back with another Black Window Cream podcast, new episode every single Wednesday and Sunday. I'm your host, Ben Haggerty, a.k.a. Ben Real Verse World. And today's special guest is my guy, Red Gaskell. Red is a director, photographer, and a marketer. Red got his start when he began working on the brand marketing side for a company called Everlane for four years, building their social reach to new levels and adding so much value to that company. He eventually chose to take a leap of faith and focus on becoming a full-time freelance creator, but quickly got a full-time job building the marketing for Casey Neistat's latest venture 368 a creator resource space in new york city red later went on to work with brands such as airbnb floyd year and day pitchfork vans team vogue and snapchat in this episode some of the things that we talk about are how red was able to get a job at everlane by redesigning the everlane website in photoshop to show off his creative talents and his visions for the business his thought process on leaving a secured job like everlane or 368 and exploring the freelance career path the story behind his self-published book filled with screenshots of Kanye West tweets titled "Uh Uh-huh Honey that he wrote as a joke and how it went massively viral, covering Red's rent for several months. Advice for creatives who want to move to bigger cities and how you can best prepare for that move, the importance of surrounding yourself with the team, and so much more. This episode is packed with incredible information. I'm excited for you guys to hear it, but if this is your first time tuning the podcast, you are probably wondering... What the fuck is Black With No Cream? Great question. Black With No Cream is the illest educational resource for content creators fueled by caffeine. Or at least I take my coffee Black With No Cream, but you can drink or not drink whatever caffeine you fuck with and still be a part of our community. We have thousands of members from all around the world working together by sharing content, asking for feedback, passing tips and tricks along to one another with the goal of pushing each other to become the best motherfucking content creators on earth. And you can join our private group if you want to by going to bwnc.com slash join. We would love to fucking have you. Please join. All right, that's it. Enjoy the work week. Keep creating. Make sure you tune in every single Wednesday and Sunday for a new Black Window Cream podcast episode. And do not forget to follow us on Instagram at Black Window Cream. Subscribe to us on YouTube to access all of our educational content and share this episode out with someone who needs it. If you find it helpful, we would appreciate that. And without further ado, I bring to you my episode with Red and the most epic podcast intro ever created right motherfucking now. Attention. If you stop this podcast recording at any time, you will die. I don't want to die. Do you want to live? Yeah. You have 24 hours to share this podcast with five people or you will die. I'm kidding. You won't die. You're just weak shit for not sharing. And the winner of the best motherfucking podcast goes to... Goes to... Black with no cream. What do you think? It's so fucking dumb and so fucking Ben Haggerty. I knew you would say that. And the podcast has officially begun. Red Gaskell. Skell. Red Gaskell. No, I, I did it right. That's, that's correct. Yeah, good, because yeah. now I'm second guessing myself. No, no, you're good. That was perfect pronunciation. It sounds to me French. You said it's English. Yeah. Huh. I, just, I took a 23 and me test. Did you? 2.9% British Irish. Ooh. <laughs> Is that where you send your, you have to like take a blood sample or? Uh, no, no, you just like spit in a thing and then you mail it to them and then they tell you based on that. I had to do it twice though. They were like, there wasn't enough saliva in the <laughs> sample and I was like, all right. <laughs> they, they like, they're like, we're going to send you a tutorial and it's a scene from Titanic and we're going to teach you how to spit real good. <laughs> so I just hocked up a loogie real good. I was Damn, like, oh. that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. How long did it take to get the, the results? Like two weeks. Oh, shit. I don't know how it all works, but I'm just like, it told me all the results with percentages and everything. It's like, simple, bro. They have yeah. uh, 15 templates and they just send them out at random. <laughs> when you, you, you spend $100, yeah. they send you some piece of paper. <laughs> and you're like, wow, I'm 25% this. Probably. But I hope yeah. it's real. That's cool. Yeah. You said yeah. that's why you got the tattoo on your arm? Uh, well, not why I got it. I got it because my dad did a bunch of research at first, yeah. like where our last name came from. Right. Because we're from the Philippines. So we were like, we we're mostly calling us by the, by the Spanish. Yeah. But we have a British last name. So he was like, how'd that happen? Right. Uh, so we were trying to figure it out. I've actually, since it's not a common last name like Smith, I've been Googling like people with the last name. And turns out there's a lot of other people who are like DPs. One dude is a surfer for Patagonia. There's like a lot of different interesting right. gaskels. And in Oakland, there's like a, a Victorian ball that happens every year, which I was just like, what the f- <laughs> Yeah, you're like learning all this. Shit. Damn, <laughs> yeah. I should deep dive into my name. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, so yeah. what's the actual tattoo? So it's a, it's a coat of arms okay. that my dad had found with our last name. 
and me and my brother were actually have the same tattoo. We thought it'd really? be cool. Yeah, we that thought it'd be dope. a cool tattoo to get as brothers. You gotta get, so does your dad have it too or no? I know he's not really into tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> he's gotta get it one time, Dad. Come on, one time, Dad. Um, no, I've already prefaced uh, you in the intro, obviously. Cool. Um, yeah. But for you to summarize yourself as a creator, how how would you kind of like uh, package yourself? Cool. Uh, I was a marketer. Now I am a photographer and director. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Your work is A1. Thank you. A1. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we, I, I, for some reason thought we met, but I forgot we just had like a really long phone call. Yep. Maybe a year ago, mm -hmm. probably a year ago. Shout out to Marcus Frisky. He's been on the podcast before. Um, Cause I got to go out to, I was in New York to do a uh, direct the battlefield campaign mm -hmm. thing. And then the day after, they were also doing another Battlefield campaign at 368, which is uh, Casey Neistat's creative space in right. New York. And you were working working with him on some so stuff? So I, I joined to help launch and open it, and I set up a lot of the partnerships with like EA and a couple other of the brands that are in that space. Right. Uh, I also did, you know, like I helped assist with shooting, uh, and more of like the event-based things. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I wanted to continue focusing on my own studio and stuff after that. Right, so, so you like help kickstart the whole yeah. thing, which is it's blown up and they've yep. done a ton of cool stuff there. Yep. Um, and for those of you who live in Iraq and don't know what we're talking about, it's just a really cool, very big spot. I cannot imagine how much <laughs> it costs to own that spot in New York, but uh, or rent it, but I mean, in New York City, you know, I, my, my homie's apartment is a tiny shoe box yeah. and he spends about the same as, as I do on rent. But that place is like three levels or something. Uh, yeah, it's got a basement uh, and a, like a upstairs and that, that ground floor yeah. that where all the events happen. And it's, it's so crazy. dope. It yeah. was cool. But I got to meet a bunch of different people there. And then while I was there, I don't know what it was that connected us or maybe you had just started to go freelance and Marcus was like, yo, you mm -hmm. needed to meet this yeah, dude. Yeah, exactly. Because I was assuming that you were going to be out in the field doing stuff mm -hmm. and we could like link. But yep. um, we had a really good conversation. And I was like, oh, yeah. this dude is really dope. And you yeah. told me a bunch of stuff of what you were doing. And, uh, and we just chatted the other day and you're like, yeah. yo, I'm actually coming to LA. Yeah. Um, in like tomorrow, <laughs> I was like, do you want to do a podcast? Yeah. Hell so yeah. he just yeah. landed yep. at LA straight from the airport. Yeah. Straight from the airport here is his suitcase is right there on the ground. <laughs> um, no, nah, but I'm stoked to have you on, man. This I'm is, excited it, to be here. It sounds like a all, wild almost career. all the episodes. So really? It's like kind of surreal to like see it <laughs> on my screen yeah, 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 and then like be here and like be gotcha. able to touch, yeah, touch that thing. It's, it's nice, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like, good luck, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually had this dude, I, I hate that I cannot think of his name. Someone uh -huh. suggested to him, uh, he was a black window cream member and, and oh, I word. guess decals cars. And so he's like, yo, I could pull up and decal your wall with whatever oh, logo sure. you have. I was like, okay. And he came in, he had like a torch yeah. and all this shit. And I just signed the lease. I'm like terrified. He's like burning the wall. He's like, no, nah, I just melted on and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just sitting there like, all right. But he <laughs> killed it. Like we have yeah. a logo, which is dope. Yeah. Um, nah, man, it's, it's been awesome building this out and trying to like help creators. But obviously like you coming yeah. in this field, like you've gone through, directed, done, you're constantly doing, do you claim yourself as a photographer? Cause you're always shooting images. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've, I've, been taking on mostly video work now, but I I think photography, to be a photographer it doesn't mean you have to be paid for it. It's just like right. something you do, right? Yeah. So I, yeah, I do. But I feel like when you like you're searching stuff on, oh, yeah. you, like yeah, I don't yeah. see it anywhere. Like you're not yeah, advertising. True. It, but then yeah. your Instagram is literally all photos that you're taking of like your homies and like yep. landscapes and yep, yep. stuff yep. like that. But yeah, your photos yeah. are fire. Like Thank you. you, you Thank which, you. What do you shoot on? Uh, right now I'm using the Sony A7R2. First camera I bought when I started going freelance. Really? Actually. Oh, yeah. nice. So yeah. you're using it for photo and video? Yep. Nice. That's yeah, dope. Yeah. At first I thought I was going to be more of a photographer mm -hmm. and then more and more I started getting more video projects. Right. And I was like, damn, I should have got the S. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. That's what rentals are for, I guess. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. No, okay, so uh, there's so many things that we can talk about. There was mm. one, one thing that I, right out the gate, we have to talk about it. And I know you probably, any interview you've probably done, you've probably talked about this, but I thought yeah. this was interesting. And I know you, you worked for um, like a marketing company or you were part of a marketing division at a company mm -hmm. for like four years. Yeah, uh, so that was Everlane. Ever, Everlane. Yeah. Everlane. Yeah. But before or after that, you did this Kanye book. Oh, yeah. I want to just talk about the Kanye book first because this is so tight to me. Like, I literally okay. was like, what could I, what could yeah, I, yeah. after we got off the phone, I was like, uh -huh. damn, you made a book. What could yeah. I make a book about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you made a book about Kanye's tweets? Yeah, so he got back on Twitter, was that 2018 uh, or 2019? Yeah, 2018. Yeah, it had taken the, a while. In the, like, in, around, like, April. And 
everyone was on the internet like retweeting him they're like oh he's back what's what's he gonna say and it was just like these sort of like inspirational quotes about creativity and art and uh at one point he tweeted like this is the book i'm writing in real time it'll never be published but like i'll work on it when i feel like it it'll never be done and i was like oh that's funny like what if I just made this a book right now? Like, is that even possible? Like, I don't even know right. how to make a book. Right, like, right, right. All my work, I just like use the internet. Yeah. So I was like, I haven't made a book. I have friends that made zines, but uh, so I just did my Googles and um, I made a few, I made the first four pages of what I thought it could be and I can't draw or anything. Yeah. So I was like, what could I pair this with? Oh, I'll put the, I'll put the tweets with like shitty illustrations that I do <laughs> and I just stick figures. So like the, the front cover is your illustration. Yeah. Well, so the, I traced that. Okay. I actually traced that, but everything else I freestyled and not even with a tablet or anything. I just, I used the trackpad on, right. on the oh MacBook in Photoshop. Just like I gave myself a time limit too. I was like two minutes per drawing. So whatever two. I finished in two minutes, that was the page. Is that, do you note that in the book somewhere? That you no, I, I didn't really. That. I just, I just let I tell people after, but I think you can tell too, just by yeah, sure, at right. It was like <laughs> yeah. okay, he did that with a trackpad, yeah, yeah, and yeah, he yeah. had two minutes. Yeah, 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 That'd yeah. be a funny fact at the beginning. Like this book was inspired by Kanye. Every image in here was created in less than two minutes. Maybe I should release a special edition. Ooh, Ooh, yeah, with with, with uh, artist commentary for each page. I think it could be hard. Yeah, yeah, it could be hard. But anyway, um, okay. So, so you create this book. Yeah. Um, First, you're doing it, you're just creating pages like on your computer and yeah. designing. Yeah, and then I posted a couple on Twitter and on my Instagram story, and people were like, yo, you should actually make this a book. Th like, just figure it out, do it. And uh, So the next day, it was Sunday, and I spent like three hours on it, and then I found Amazon owns this thing called createspace.com, okay. which is now Kindle Direct Publishing, like KDP or something like okay. that. And you can self-publish a book, music, TV show, kind of anything. They'll put it on Prime for you. Okay. And then take care of like shipping and all that stuff. They take a lot of the money, but like I I I didn't care about the money. I just wanted to get it out into right, the world. Right, right, right. Because I thought, okay, this could be a funny meme that lives and dies on Twitter in 24 hours, or this could be something I see at my friend's house and laugh at. Right. Like uh, a <laughs> just a book of Kanye's <laughs> tweets. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, that yeah. makes sense. So, um, and I was like, I'm not spending any money on this. It's just literally like my time. So what are you saying? Like you, you create the book and you have like the PDF of a book. And yeah. Then so I create the PDF in InDesign uh -huh. and they give you the format and they're like, follow this template, like make Amazon it this size. Does. Yeah. Amazon okay. does. They're like, if you want it this size, this is what you have to do. And this is like where you have to leave the content in the bleed the margins, lines and all, bleed that, lines, stuff, all right. that stuff. So I, all, I was just following a recipe. Right. And uh, at 9 p.m., I just hit submit and upload. And they're like, do you want a physical proof first to check the print quality? I was like, no, digital proof <laughs> is fine. Like, I chose. I don't give a fuck about this. Yeah, I just put I, it out. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I chose the cheapest paper, the cheapest ink. Like, I was like, this, there's no color. It's black and white. Right. So let's just go. And then at 9 a.m. the next morning, I think I was flying out for a gig. I got an email. They're like, your book is on Amazon Prime. I was like, what? Are you serious? That fast? Like, I went to sleep. I woke up. I'm at the airport, and it's already on Prime. Like, the book's design is done. Yeah, and I was in New York. My friend, he, I sent it to him in L.A. He ordered it on Monday morning, first thing. He got it on, mon on Wednesday morning. Holy shit. It's so fast. I don't know what. They print so he got a physical copy. He got a physical copy that fast. What I did not know it worked like that. Yeah. So as soon as that happened, I was like, okay, who else can I send this to? So like I sent I told all my friends, I was posting about it, but then I was like, how how much further can we push this? So I like I was like, maybe I know someone at Hype Beast or High Snobiety. Um got, I sent so I just kept sending it out. I knew someone who worked at Complex. Um, my friend gave me their address and I mailed it to a reporter actually at Complex. Holy shit. And then I uh, I got in contact with High Snobiety in team in Berlin, not New York. Which I've been to there. When I was in Berlin, we oh, got word. brought to a High Snobiety party, which is so oh, funny. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I didn't uh, know they had like a spot. I didn't know that. Maybe that's where it's. So that's where it started. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, that's the main like headquarters. And someone on <laughs> the 
uh, like photo director team. He's like, yeah, we can publish this. This is funny. So I didn't even have a physical copy. He's like, can you send us a photo of it? I was like, no, I, I don't have it yet. <laughs> yeah. So they just mocked it up for me based on the pages I had. They like made their own version of the book. What? And then published it. And that was my first spike. I made, I sold like a couple thousand off of it. Thousand? That. A yeah. couple thousand? I think I... <laughs> I think I sold like oh. two thousand or so total. Oh man, two or three thousand, and like the <clears throat> first, and then I got a second spike later on when it started spreading and people were buying it at, at, for friends as a joke. But then, um, do you ever watch Freaks and Geeks? Mm, the old Freaks, did yeah, they have the a old new ramp, a revamp of it too? Maybe, but the old one. Yeah, I James. watched it. I don't know if I, I'm not even gonna lie. I was okay. like, yeah. Saved by the Bell Word. type dude. No worries. No worries. Well, Busy Phillips, like her producer, got it for her as a gift. And she has like a million followers. Like on randomly. Instagram. Yeah, she, uh, randomly. And she finds me on Instagram because my name's there. She doesn't, and I only have photos uh, that I've taken, like, I don't have photos of myself on there. Yeah. So she's like doing a full on two minute book review, like page by page. Like a talking, video? Yeah, like an Instagram story. Talking about this book, how funny it is. And like, I don't know who this person is, Red Gaskell. I, I mean, I looked him up, I tagged him. I don't know if it's a dude or a chick, but it's funny. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> All, I was like freaking out. And that day I sold another couple hundred. Holy shit. Yeah. How much was the book for? It was like, I, sell it for like I sold bucks? it for 10 bucks. 10 bucks? Yeah. 10 bucks, what, what would Amazon take from it? So it was like a 60 40 split. So they took That's not bad. It's though. not like, bad. That's not for the worst like, deal you could ever. I'm, three hours of my time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you don't even have to like hold stock. No. Nah. Like you, they just print on demand or something. That's insane, dude. I'm, I'm still making, like, after that first two months, that's when it died down. But I'm still making like anywhere from like thirty to fifty bucks a month just That's from hilarious. residual <laughs> people finding about out about it and stuff like that. Damn. Yeah. You should keep that like like that should be a series based on just anyone like anyone who goes AWOL on Twitter. Like you yeah. should that should be your market, bro. That that is true. I have had Amanda like, Bynes, bro. Yeah, no, and I gotta go to classic Kanye tweets too. Yeah. Rihanna's Twitter. Oh, like there's man. a lot of there's a lot of people on Twitter. That there's a lot. Y- hey, there's a lot of easy money to be yeah. made out there, bro. It took you a couple yeah. hours and you made. Yeah. A few, I don't know yeah. how much money you made off it, but yeah. like, goddamn, like that's Maybe, pretty amazing. You know, I paid my rent for two months off of it. Oh man, that's so funny. Yeah. That's the dumbest way to pay rent. Like that's so crazy that that worked. But that was the first spark where I was like, you don't have to just make money off of someone saying, I want to hire you, right. be here from nine to five and do these tasks right. and you will get paid. It was like, oh, I can make money through just like a random idea I have. Yeah. And it's just like you kind of figure out what are the steps to get it no, to that of course, point, right? Of course. Yeah. That's so sick. I, yeah. And it's also like crazy that a lot of people spend like years writing and developing these books and then yeah. they put it on Amazon and it just tanks and gets no love. And yeah. then you're just like, uh, post, go sleep, sleep probably real good. Don't even think about it. Wake yeah. up in the morning, get to an email. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, bing, 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 bing. were you getting reviews and stuff too? Were people yeah, leaving reviews? I got, uh, it's at four out of five stars on Amazon right now. Actually, when it Dude, first- Dude, who docked that thing down? Like, I had, I had, who took it? Well, some- it is kind of short. It is like less than 50 pages. So maybe it isn't a book. Maybe it's more of a zine. But still, I, I get it. I mean, it was, I, I made it within the first but that's week the, and a that's half. That's what's of, funny. He, he didn't have enough tweets to make more than right. 50 pages. Right. So, Damn. Um, uh, but. So funny. Uh, I had a thought. I forgot. My bad. Yeah, when, no worries. When was. So. Oh, it hit number one. You. Uh, <laughs> Number, number one. one new parody release. So ridiculous. Like, that first spike from High Snobody helped propel it up. I yeah. was I was freaking out because I was like on a job and like I couldn't focus because I kept seeing it go like number nine, number eight, and like it kept changing. I was like, and then it hit number one, and I was like, I'm numb. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. made it. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. What if it was like a New York Times bestseller or something? Uh, like, could you that imagine? That would have been nuts. That would have been the funniest thing. Like, you could yeah. build a whole business. Like, that's where that is like, oh, this yeah. is like something people would grab onto. Because yeah. it's just, think about 
you're targeting is Kanye people that pay attention to Kanye or people who hate Kanye, mm-hmm. right? They mm-hmm. want to buy it for someone who hates Kanye because they love reading it and he'll, yeah. they'll be like, oh, Kanye's so stupid. Or yeah. there's people that are like, this is motivating and I love Kanye mm-hmm. or I'm just a yay fan. Yep. But then you just do that to all these people that have those fans anyway. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, exactly. Damn, that's wild. And so there's no copyright issues with that? So they, I actually got a <laughs> uh, email from Amazon saying like, hey, these are tweets. Like, they're free. Why are you selling them? And then um, I counter. I didn't even think about it at first. I was like, people were like, aren't you worried? I was like, no, I'll deal with it. It'll, it'll be actually cooler if I get sued or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but what I ended up doing was I, uh, I told them, hey, I, I drew all of these photos, uh, all of these images that are in the book. That's my artwork. They're like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> 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 That's the stupidest. Yeah. All right, sure. And yeah. Kanye's like, yeah. I don't care, man. Like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I don't even. I there is a chance he might have seen it because I know this uh, art director, creative director, who was working at Havas in Chicago. Yeah, and he DM'd me and told me like he has it on his desk. And the next day, I saw him post a photo where like Kanye visited their offices. Like he he was in the photo with him. Yeah. he was like, oh yeah, he's came through and I was like I jammed him back and I was like did he see my book no response right, right, <laughs> I was right, like, right. Damn, yeah, he's, gonna, he's just gonna let that simmer on you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean that's you know the thing is man and I haven't been around artists like this yeah like they know yeah they always know like yeah, I would see true. it all the time where mm-hmm. you, you'd see like some parody video of like mm. and the like with I remember like Destiny's Child they were both all talking about some video that some fan made and they're like oh, oh it's so cute yeah i loved it yeah. blah 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 and i'm like it's crazy like do these people even have a clue you know what i mean mm. like they have no mm-hmm. idea that these people are paying attention and see that stuff if they react to it that's awesome but yeah a lot of the times yeah. it's like they just no they notice it but it's yeah. crazy that he probably didn't yeah. see that. it's probably like, huh <laughs> <laughs> i don't even remember saying that <laughs> but anyway all right so yeah. circle back circle back so from the philippines yep born and raised there or born there and moved to la when i was one one oh yeah. shit yeah nice yeah. So, so i'm basically a california kid right so how and how long you stayed here till you moved to new york or what uh then i was in la for about five years mm-hmm. moved up to the bay area because my dad got a job up there so uh we were in the bay area till i was about 12 then moved to sacramento which was a crazy move because like Bay, like California is very diverse, but as soon as you go like three, four hours inland, yeah. it's like a totally different, you're it's in like, a different place. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's like deserty so and desert, random. And, and it was not diverse at all. I was like maybe one of like three Asian kids in my middle school. Really? Yeah, it was crazy. Wow. Because I, I just thought like, oh yeah, California is the same, but yeah. it, it wasn't there yet. It is now because a lot of people from the Bay Area, you know, pricing and all that stuff, yeah. they've ventured out right. into that that part of California, but yeah, more bang for your it buck. was, a it was, it was, I think it helped me become more creative because like me and my brother green, we weren't really like cool with anyone. So we're kind of outcast. So we, we spent a lot of time on the internet, on YouTube, on forums, right? Just, just figuring stuff out. Gaming yeah. was big for us too. So, so you're one, it's just you and your brother or do you have any other siblings? So, uh, there's a huge gap. There's my, my, the oldest is my sister. Yeah. She's 13 years older. Okay. Word. Then I have a brother who is, uh, 11 years older. Damn. And his name's blue. Red, green, blue. <laughs> yeah. And what's her sister's name? Her, her name's Tanya. Actually. What the hell? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the hell? How'd Tanya get out of this mess? Like red, uh, green, and blue. Yeah. Well, cause my dad, he got to name the boys and then my mom was like, well, well, shit, you already named she, gets, green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was the first born too, but it's it's because my dad was a hippie. Yeah, in the Philippines, and like we're pretty fair skinned for being Filipino, and in the Philippines, everyone's pretty brown. Right. So they called him like Whitey growing up. That was his nickname. Really? <laughs> yeah. Which like in America is like totally different context, but there it was like it was endearing yeah, yeah, a yeah. bit. Uh, and when he got older, he was like a hippie. There, he had the long hair, the mustache, and everything. Um, and he, one day I, he was probably like, he was probably like high. Yeah. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to name my kids after colors. That'd be tight. <laughs> and I've heard stories from my sister. Like she was like, yeah, you know, they used to have me roll the joints because I had small hands. 
months. Wow, that's legendary. <laughs> I was like, yo, dad. Because I saw you wrote on your website that your dad um, like held a festival or something. He, like, oh, yeah, so r- he, him and his buddies, they had... Um, they held this thing called the Antipolo Rock Festival after Woodstock happened in 1970 right. in the Philippines. It was their version of it. They, it was like, I think six or 12 of them. They organized it, threw it in like the mountains south of Manila and like the government shut it down and all this crazy. It was <laughs> so like, wild. No shot, no yeah. shot. Yeah. So yeah. Th- it never happened. It happened, it but happen. it, it got shut down in the middle. Wow, of damn. Yeah. That's yeah. They're crazy. They're like, we're the drugs. Yeah, the drugs. right. Yeah. Yeah. So you, I mean, it sounds like your family's kind of like, and I think your mom, your mom said, you said something about her for Kodak, like, or something what, it was like. Film. Yeah, she was, uh, so she was a model back in the day, her and her sisters. Yeah. And she was a model for a Kodak film. Actually. That's crazy, and I've I've, I've been talking to some people at Kodak trying to f- go through their archives of oh, like damn. where's the ad because I, I found out the agency that did it I think it was McCann and I'm like yo can we find this because she doesn't have a copy of it anymore it got That's lost crazy. through the moves and all that stuff yeah yeah but I've only been learning this stuff now as an adult having these conversations with my parents yeah of course because they I was like mom why did you tell me this stuff she's like oh I didn't think you cared I was like yeah right yeah I, I do care yeah we were on forums back yeah. in the middle of nowhere yeah. <laughs> only Asians around like yeah, yeah. I want creativity that's yeah. that but it sounds like they have that like creative gene in them which yeah. obviously pawned off you said your brother shoots a video somewhere around here in California yeah so he was he was actually on America's Best Dance Crew Okay. So we started, he, he, me and him, when we were, we started off with breakdancing. Yeah. And then he got more advanced into the choreo, hip hop, like basically mastering everything. Yeah. And then him and his crew, they were on the last season of America's Best Dance. Damn, that's dope. Yeah. Did they, how Uh, far did they get? They got into, they got four episodes in, um, but their style was more not like technical. They wanted to edit tell a full story and entertain right. so they're really funny yeah and they they're always about making people feel good and laugh uh the crew is called step boys okay. all their skits are on youtube and yeah. like to this day they're still funny and you can see now how other crews have incorporated that comedy element to right. a lot of their styles yeah Damn. um so he went from that and then he decided to stay in la he he was doing well in school but he was like you know what I'm gonna drop out. I was like, yeah, I got an accounting degree and it's worthless. So drop out and like, just go hard at this. Yeah, if right. you drop out, like just don't quit. He was going to school for what? He was in community college. Like, oh, right. He was gonna just transfer. Going to school. Yeah, yeah, he was just going to school. Got it. Um, I, he didn't know what he was gonna do yet. I was like, yeah, just kill it. Cause I did the community college route and then transferred. Right, same. And he was gonna do the same thing cause it saved money. But I was like, save a lot more money and just don't do don't this. Go. And if you know what you want to do, then just do it like a thousand percent. Yeah, absolutely. So he moved to LA and figured it out. He started working for um, someone else that is from our hometown who absolutely killed it on like, So You Think You Can Dance. His crew won America's Best Dance Crew before him. Uh, and he was just getting into YouTube, more of like the comedy and skit stuff with like Niga Higa like Ryan and that crew. Right. He, he started his own channel. Wow. My brother was shooting with him, helping write scripts, doing post-production, all that stuff. Damn, that's dope. And he just got like a film school education really quick. Yeah, I bet. Through like just high uh, volume of content. Right, yeah. just constantly putting things out. Yeah. So, so while in that time you're, you know, when did you start like kind of getting interested in film yourself? You know what I mean? Was it so, during that time of dancing where you guys like shooting your videos? Yeah. So, I mean, it started early on, like even in school, like I have this elementary school photo where I got like one of those big cameras on like a tripod cause mm-hmm. I was still too weak to, <laughs> to hold, hold it. it. <laughs> but I like, I'm like holding it like it is on my shoulder, yeah. but it's really on the tripod. Right. Um, and I think it was like second or third grade. So I was just always drawn to like, how do I make videos? Yeah. And every class project where the teacher was like, yeah, you could do a, a poster board, diorama, uh, a speech, or you can make a video. I always chose to make a video. Oh, of course. That's even, so fun. Yeah, even in Spanish class, I was like, yeah, I'm going to make a video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right? I know. Yeah. I'll, I, I never, I got exempted out of, so this is funny. I got exempted out of Spanish because no. I have dysnomia, which is like a short-term memory loss thing, oh, basically. Sure. Yeah. Uh, 
So when they figured out that I had that, they pulled me out of Spanish. Like <laughs> they basically like, let's just have you focus on your primary language. And I'm like, oh shit. Oh damn. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> all right. So then I just would like focus on test taking and like, mm. I, but so they took me out of Spanish and it sucked. But then all my friends in Spanish had to do the same thing and they would make these like home video Spanish like but it had they had to speak in spanish and like no one knew how to shoot it or edit it so i'd they'd always have me come shoot oh, it no. i'm like i have no idea what the hell's going on in this story yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? you're just like yeah okay, what are this yeah but i what? just found the footage the other day for oh, like did? another video yeah it's so bad it's oh, just like man. yeah it was really i wish wild. i could find my footage because mine like we just did the least amount of spanish but we made it like an alien invasion movie <laughs> of course and like I found I was using Sony Vegas yeah and all I did was like figure out how to get the muzzle flashes on the airsoft guns <laughs> so that we could make it like our own <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're like we're cute. we're going to go so far in this career and uh, the teacher was like you know the video was was really good but there wasn't a lot of Spanish in there <laughs> So <laughs> it's a silent film. Yeah. <laughs> so leave me alone. <laughs> Damn, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah but that, so you were like always trying to like yeah. act on it. You just but I just didn't know. Like no one had modeled it out for me. I thought like, oh okay, when I become an adult, I can't do this. I have to like, I just have to get a job. Right. Like n I didn't know how or where to even start. Mm. I just thought like, okay, this is something I can do on the f fun on the side, and then. I'll just have to work like a normal office kind of gig. So is that you, did you say you took accounting in college? Yeah, I took accounting. So is that why? Like that you were just like, oh, I could, that could be a thing I could yeah, get Yeah, I was on. like, okay, you know, people do taxes every... I was, it was just very... I didn't think about it too hard. I was just very shallow. Like, yeah, people do taxes every year. These people, they make money. Like, that's job security. Right. Okay, this is safe. Right. Like, I'll do that. Right. Uh, but my first internship was was with my sister's friend and she needed someone to do like an account like an accounting internship and I feel so bad because I was like very I quit like after two weeks really uh, and I was not good at it because the first task I had to do was like organize receipts right you're like huh. and I was like oh, oh. and then like as the more I learned about accounting it's like okay there's bookkeeping and then there's like consulting and auditing and all these other things which is sort of helpful now but yeah. still at the time i was just like i think i was just forcing myself into it through sheer will right and i was like getting good grades and doing all that stuff but like i was just not happy in it and i was like uh, during that internship i was like this is what the rest of my life is gonna be <laughs> oh my god yeah right no yeah it's terrifying so uh i quit that and i got an internship actually running did you quit that in october no, no. <laughs> uh, we were talking about that before the podcast started. He's like, I quit a lot of my jobs in October. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I quit that and I actually got an internship doing um, running Twitter for a food truck here in LA. Hmm. They sold like ice cream cookies and ice cream sandwiches. Right. And it was mad fun. Like I didn't really have to do much. It was, it was just like tweeting and taking photos. And I was like, oh, this is a job. Cool. Yeah. Um, and did that pay well? Or was it just like it was just random? Food. Yeah, I was in college. I was like, yeah, as long as they feed me and I could. Oh, like, they give you food for it. Yeah, that's such a solid trade, though. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. Especially in college. I was yeah, like, yeah, of course. Fine. And I worked at a restaurant too, so I was like, I don't need the money. This is a cool experience. Right. Um, and then I ended up getting a job running Facebook for this. Uh, well, I say running Facebook, but it was like they just tell me what to do. Yeah, right. Um, but it was a router company, D Link. Okay. Over yeah. in Orange County. Yeah. And like that was my first like, D Link, like the D Link selling like Yeah, that. like the routers yeah. and the webcams and stuff right, like right. that. And I was like figuring out Facebook contests and huh. like writing stuff. And I had a boss that was just like telling me what to do and proving stuff. But that was my first time I was like seeing a big company with cubicles and like people who'd been there like 10, 15, 20 years, and I was like Oh, oh, okay. This right. is what the working world's like. Yeah. Um, but uh, I decided after a few months that I just I needed to leave LA. I'd been there and through college, and it was just time to go. Right. I wasn't ready for New York, and I I visited San Francisco for like a management consulting job, which I completely bombed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know how I yeah. got the interview. Right. <laughs> but I just spent the the weekend there I, I vibed with it I had a bunch of friends from Sacramento moved to San Francisco and I was like yeah I'll figure it out let's just do it I moved there with no job 
found something on Craigslist, like this internship, and it was like marketing consulting or something like that. And uh, Uniqlo, you know that store? No. Uh, Japanese, like, it's a huge chain of stores in Japan and all over the world. They're kind of like a more minimal Japanese gap, I guess you could say. Right. But like super affordable, clean basics. Uh, but I was helping open that store retail. So I was doing an internship from like nine to four and then working there from like six to like graveyard shift. At and the that, store? Yeah, at the store. Doing just like boxes Just sales associate, and, right, right. like fulfillment yeah. stuff. You know, just like j- work working at a store. So the internship was for the same company in the marketing department? Uh, no, it was for, uh, what's it called? It was, it was for this place called the Culinary Edge. Oh, so it's completely, completely different. Completely different. Got it, got yeah. it. That was yeah. just your night shift job. Yeah, that was my gotcha, night shift gotcha. job. And um, this was where I started learning more about like the agency world because mm-hmm. they were like an agency, but just for food related businesses, whether it was restaurants, consumer packaged goods, right. stuff like that. They did everything from like operation stuff to like branding and like photography and like just creating like a feeling and yeah. emotion for things. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Okay. This is a little bit more creative than the previous things. And it felt like a natural step. But I was still doing like surveys. I remember the first week on the job, they were like, we got a, we got a pizza client. So they ordered pizza from like 20 different places in the city to have it delivered. To you? To the office. Why? Because <laughs> they were they were – they were doing that was research to try the so 20 different of their locations or something 20 different competitors oh just to see like what their boxes like, okay, are like. like how fast does it get uh. here do they bring do they use the um like the sleeve thing to keep the pizza hot or do they just show up with the box what's it look like when you open the box and then like there's all these things that go into like making a good pizza delivery experience that I wasn't even thinking about. Right. And are that some, is that part of what that company does is like yeah. give advice on that? Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's dope. Um, and so they figured all that stuff out. And then I remember I was just like eating the pizza. I was like, oh yeah, this is pretty good. Okay. And then you'd like write notes in the notebook. And then after like three or four, I was like, how many more do we have? I'm getting full. <laughs> and they're like, Red, you're not supposed to eat the pizza. I was like, what do you mean? And they all had like these buckets. Like, you know, when you go on wine tasting oh, and you don't drink it, you're supposed to spit it out. I was like, yo, I'm yeah, not going to spit out this no. pizza. No, this pizza's fire. And I was like, yo, this is kind of gross. Yeah, right? <laughs> Damn. But that yeah. makes, ten- that makes yeah. sense, I guess. But so everyone else was just like chewing it and then spitting yeah. it out. Just and to they get, would, like, it's crazy because they would have clients come in when they were developing menus and they're like, we got 80 different dishes for you to try because they would fly in. Uh, from Arkansas or wherever this company's headquarters right. were. And they'd be like, okay, yeah, we got 80 dishes for you to try. They'd come out in courses and they're there for like a day and a half or even just that day. So the client can't eat all the food. So of course they provide them the bucket so they can taste all the food, but not eat it. And spit it out. I feel like crazy. The, the swallowing and letting it digest is part of the process too. Like what yeah. if that pizza gives you the runs and you didn't know? Yeah. Like you got to swallow that shit and find out tomorrow. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Damn. That's yeah. crazy. Wow. Yeah. There's a whole other world out there in that industry yeah. that no one even thinks about. Yeah. Cause Damn. it's like, how do you make something taste the same at one restaurant? Not just one restaurant every day, but like if you have 10,000 stores. Yeah. Could you imagine having to do taste testing for like little Caesars, bro? Be kind of fire, probably. Little Caesars, <laughs> like the that's the and respect. I yeah. like Little Caesars. I yeah, eat yeah, it all day. Yeah, but yeah. like when you compare it to like good pizza, mm. it, but you, and then imagine seventy five versions of that mm. cheese pizza no. from Little Caesars oh, that's and been it, sitting on the little thing that just floats around and shit. Yeah. And you know there's flies in there. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. Yeah. yeah so okay. Yeah. So yeah. so you. But okay. So question: While you're doing these jobs, this is just you're out of school. You're, you yeah. don't want to do accounting really. Yeah. So you're trying it out just to move to a different city. Yeah. Um, are you chasing like a, cre- are you looking for a job that is creative or was it just cool that it kind of happened to be creative for you? It was, I was still like super ignorant or unaware. Like I still just was just kind it. of like winging it. Um, uh, my sister, she kind of was helping me guide me. So, sorry, excuse me. Uh, more on like a corporate route. Right. So I understood like, okay, when you work for a company, like 
you start at this entry level role and then you can become into management and all this stuff. So I was like understanding that sort of route because she worked in at Yahoo and then was moving on to Toyota. Okay. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, this corporate stuff makes sense. Right. But it just didn't seem right. It felt like I was sort of just following sort of some steps. Yeah. Um, and then a coworker at that place, the Culinary Edge, she got stopped by someone at a cafe and was like, hey, can can you tell me what you think of our website? And she's like, oh, actually, you should ask everyone at our company. We're a small company, and you, you, I think everyone here would have something interesting to say. Um, and this was Everlane. So they came through during lunchtime and showed us their website, and I was like, oh, I'd seen this on Tumblr. Really? Because they had initially worked with a lot of creative people to curate things on their website and like talk about their blog and just feature them. Everlane. Yeah. It, so Everlane's like a social like blog that's Yeah, it was creating. more of like a curation site. They were just telling people like what kind of brands are good to purchase from. Mm. And then at this point they they were transitioning to like we're going to make our own products. Okay. Um and I'd seen them on Tumblr cuz I was following a lot of like hashtag menswear stuff right. and like Tumblr was just the shit back in like yeah, yeah, yeah. 2008 to yeah, 2011, right. you know. Um and I'd seen it, and then they were uh, they were asking us all these questions, and the, they were like, "Yo, this office is dope. Can we take photos?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, take photos. We don't care." Uh, and then they were like, "Yeah, we're shopping for a new office, so we're going to show these to our, our boss." I was like, "Cool. Are you guys hiring?" Because that was a signal in my <laughs> mind that like my internship's ending at this place. They're shopping for a new office, right? What does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you only shop for a new office if you're like growing. Yeah, right, right. right. So uh, I asked him for a job, and I it was like two months of back and forth conversations. I tried so hard to get this job, and it was just for a customer experience role. Like I would just be helping people with their order, like what I was doing at Uniqlo, but like over email. Right. And I took their website. I redesigned it in Photoshop, but like not super designer way. It just I took screenshots of everything, and then did my own photo shoot in my. I was sleeping on my friend's couch at the time too, like, because I was I got kicked out or I left this bad apartment situation. So I was like, yeah, I'll be here two weeks until I find a new place. Turned two weeks turned to eight months. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, he was shout, a good homie. Yeah, shout out to the homie. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, damn. Uh, but like, I took the website, photoshopped myself onto it after the initial interview. Cause you, most people will send like a nice thank you email or a card or something. I was right. like, no, let me just show these people like what I want to do or like how much I want this job. I got to stand out somehow. Right. Took the website, put my photos in there, re, re changed up all the buttons and descriptions. Like the, they had a proprietary font on the header, changed it to my name. I couldn't find the font. So what I did was I took the letters from different parts of the website and like photoshopped it because they didn't have all the letters. So I photoshopped the letters together to make it look like it was still their font. Wow. I just, I, I, I remember getting the idea at like 5 p.m. and just not sleeping until 8 a.m. when it was done. And like I hit up all my friends who I knew were graphic designers kind of and be like, how's this look? Help yeah. me, just like figure, help me. they helped me figure things out. Till way late in the night. But what's but so what's the perp like in my I'm trying to imagine it. Yeah. So they have their website, you're taking it and redesigning it just to put yourself in there to show like what? Like that you could oh, be a yeah. part of their team or something? Yeah, well I wanted to show that like uh one, I just want to stand out from like the thank you emails that right. everyone else was sending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And two, I wanna show them that like I understood how to use programs and I could think in a creative way. Right. Uh, and then I also changed the, the button add to cart to add to team. And then when you clicked on it, mm. it sent me an email. Wow. So I just wanted to, you know, add a little like. Yeah. Flavor to it. Flavor to it. So that they would, they would talk. It would be something to talk about. Like, wow, yeah. this guy, he really wants to work here. Right. I don't want to just send like a normal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Something that they'll forget about at, by like 2 PM that day. Right. Um, and then I found out like it got passed around the whole office, which I didn't, I thought it was a big company, yet, but it was like 10 people. 10 people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, check out this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so that, that got me the job. That's basically. crazy. Yeah. And then I was there for, 
I was doing just emails for like six months. Like customers, like if yeah. I email with a problem or yeah. what, whatever. Yeah, but okay. then that start, then the person running social was like, can you answer stuff on Twitter and Facebook too? I was like, yeah, sure. And I was so fast that she was like, yo, you're a good writer. Can you, what else can you do? And she gave me like small projects. And then she went away for on vacation for like a week. And was like, just don't break anything. Everything's set up. And I didn't break anything. She's like, oh, wow, okay, cool. And then like a month later, she quit. She's like, yeah, you can do this job. And I was like. Oh. You can do it, see ya. I was like, what, are you sure? And uh, she's like, yeah, no, you, you can do it. I had many Skype calls with her afterwards. Right. But like, and she coached me through stuff. But like, I took over and I was like creating content, taking photos, writing copy for all the captions on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I was, I was making blog posts. Wow. I was just like, I, was, I just got thrown into the pool immediately and just had to like figure it all out. So at this time, the company is now making product, their own product? Yeah. And so what, they, what they is were, it, like clothes or something? So they were making, they started with t-shirts. They were getting more into like accessories like weekender bags. Uh, cashmere sweaters were big and this was just like probably less than two years into the company okay word and i think we had like maybe ten thousand followers on instagram 20 or fifteen thousand. when that girl quit yeah okay and we had just run a summer campaign called where i travel and that was launch that was going to lead up to this uh gallery event in new york where we're, we actually printed uh like the top photos from that summer campaign oh, in, in a real gallery for yeah. people to see. like someone flew in from like the midwest to see their photo that we printed out for them in new york damn and it was like i think one of the earliest like uh community events from the internet in real life right because uh, this was like 2013 yeah and this was your idea this was now that the company was already doing this but yeah. i like took over at the time when it happened for execution and, uh, for execution right and then we went to the holiday campaign and like over the next four or five years like we did everything from like i did the one of the first like instagram factory tours where i took like the best instagrammers from across the country they came to la showed through their lens how we make our product so that like people understood like these are the people in our factories who are making it. Like they got to know them, they got to see the process and like the quality that went into it. Wow. Not just through like the brand's lens, but through like, I think at the time, the eight people we picked, they had like a combined following of like four or five million. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like giving that perspective yeah. of what you guys do. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Damn. Okay, so then you kind of like hit the ground running. You're learning a lot. Yeah. You're shooting. Your co- you're shooting as well. Yeah. So. So, so that kind of like the first time you're starting to pick up a camera again? Uh, it was the first time I started picking up a camera professionally again. Right. Like I had just been doing it as a hobby and I was like, can I do this as a job? And what's great is it was a startup, right? Yeah. So there was no budget to hire like a big agency or anything. We're, we had our own camera in the office, uh, but I had talked to a bunch of people on Instagram, like, hey, how do you do this? What's, what's the best way to do this? Like we're not putting this on the website. We're just putting this on Instagram. What do you use? I was just learning from yeah, everyone right. I met. And they're like, honestly, just use the app or just use Visco. Just use this. Like you want it to feel real, real. Yeah. And you don't want it to be overproduced. Like, and plus like the, the post-production time on, if you shoot on a camera, then you have to put it in Lightroom. Then you got to Photoshop this. Right. It's like, do you really have time for that? I was like, no, I don't. Like, yeah, just find good light, compose it well, and take the photo. I was like, okay. And that's what I did. And it worked. I mean, that's how Instagram worked well for most brands until like 2015. Right. uh, When more like Snapchat came out and people's like, people were like, no, I don't want a pretty perfect photo anymore. I want to see something a little bit more uh, raw and wild. So th- then we adjusted our strategy, but like tried to stay true to the brand. Yeah, um, I love that. Yeah. So uh, are, are you making like an impact with the, the people at the top? Like, Yeah, so my, I, my direct report was the founder, Michael, and or I directly reported to him. And actually in the beginning, he was, he was a very tough boss. Like really? Just, he demanded perfection and 
when I took over, he was like, you don't have experience in this. Like, how can I trust you? So we kept, we worked very closely. Like I would text him stuff and he would like clear it or he'd, he'd question like, oh, why is the color temperature here more blue than this photo? Or, you know, you used an Oxford comma in this caption, but not here. I was like, oh, damn. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, I had, to, I had to operate at a very high level very quickly. I almost quit after like the holiday campaigns oh, I'm were sure done. those were ter- terrible. Yeah. <laughs> was a lot of work. Uh, but afterwards, after we came back, he was like, no, I trust you. I was like, oh, okay, maybe I can do that. After, at, at the, that yeah. was the first year? Yeah, after the first year. Right, so know. that's dope. Did anyone ever talk to you about your like your pitch to get you into the company? Did that conversation ever come up about you creating that Photoshop thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They were like, Cause I, I'm assuming at this point you got, finally you got income, so you yeah. probably graduated from your homie's couch. Yep. Yeah, got an yeah. apartment or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So like that's such a cool full circle moment to like yeah. now have like four years in the game with this company, having lived on a couch making a Photoshop pitch to someone. You know yeah. what I mean? Where you yeah. could have just probably wrote an email. Yeah. Maybe two more follow ups, and they would have just been like, "All right, fine, shit." Right. You know what I mean? But yeah. that probably sold it so much quicker for you. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It, it, and it's also a much more fun story to tell. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because he actually he. He tried to play like he wasn't impressed at first. He was like, why aren't you wearing an Everlane shirt? And I was like, oh. You're like, damn it. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's, I, but I was smart. I, I placed an order like, like uh, the day before I went in to meet him after sending it. So I was like, oh, my order's on the way. You can check the, the track. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I got one. Yeah, that's all yeah. it takes is just like yeah. buy one and we're yeah, good. Yeah, like, yeah. That's dope though. So, yeah. so, so cool, you do all these campaigns and, and you just find social strategy to like make awareness and execute yeah. like high level content. Yeah, so it was like, we ha- the company had product launches. So we're like, okay, how do we use social to tell these stories? Which platforms are we using? What's the creative on each? Right. At first, it was just like, can you take a good photo and write a good caption? Right. And that was like the the basics, mm-hmm. right? Uh, uh, I what I appreciated, he was like not about like, oh, how many li- clicks are we getting on the link or like, blah blah this or that. He was just more like, is this good? Right. And is and he's like, most other companies they worry about like, where people are going to buy it and all these multi channel things. He's like, red. They're only going to buy it on everlane.com. Everyone knows what our website is. That's the only place to buy it. So like, don't worry about linking or anything because like, we just got to trust people will find it if we make good content. That's interesting. Uh, so he was just like, don't just don't make anything. He's like, the worst thing you could do is make things boring. Right. So that gives you an opportunity to just kind of excel and create. Yeah. But so, so you grew the Instagram account, yeah, right? Yeah. So it went from like 15, 20 to almost 500,000 when I left. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. What do you feel like, what do you feel like was the biggest spike in followers? Like what was it that you did or was it a cumulative of just constant like marketing and doing different campaigns? So, I mean, looking back now, I think it was, it was, we never really got a big spike. And when we did, we actually asked Instagram to like turn it off. Cause in, in the early days you could get on the suggested user list and anyone who signed up for the, for an Instagram account, they would get um, they would get all these accounts. They're like, you should follow, blah, blah, blah. Right, right, right. But um, what we noticed was like engagement went from like yeah. 20% down to like five. Right. And we're like, who are these followers? Where are they coming from? And it, it's like a lot of them were outside of the US, which is cool, but we didn't sell there. Right. So we're like, yo, slow it down. Like we got to figure this out. We're not ready for all this. And you can contact yet. them directly. Yeah, Instagram. They were super accessible back in the day. Yeah. Now it's such a big company; it's like hard to. Yeah. And also, like it was very early for brands to be on there, so they were just like, "Yo, what do you guys need? Cool, yeah, let us know." Um, and some of them, were, they were early Everlane fans. I think like, I think some of the investors or someone had known the company too. Wow. Yeah, there's. It's just like the ties in 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 Silicon Valley. Yeah, are, right. You know, yeah, everyone's like, neighbors. Yeah, and yeah, yeah exactly. They eat. Starbucks yeah. at the yeah. same time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. So it was like growing, but sometimes the numbers were from different people, but gra- overall it was like it was, a nice it was much gradual. more gradual thing. And we had like spikes through like these strategic launches that we had. And what I think really helped is like, we had such a strong team. It wasn't just like, Oh, I grew the Instagram, but like, 
we had a strong events team right. who had who created like these amazing events that like customers and people would go to and would want to create like their own social content for. Right. And they designed these beautiful campaigns and emails and like people would be talking about it on on Twitter or like sharing like screenshots on Instagram and right, stuff like that. Right, right, right. So or like when they got their product they were like, I want to share this on Instagram because it's so beautiful. Right. So it was like really like all these elements helped grow the brand. And I was just making sure like I was trying to tell the best story I could about like the brand that day or like what products we were making. That sounds so fun. Yeah. Like, it, it, like I always think about it now, like from a freelance yeah. spot, it's like I get to do that on a micro level where you come in and you get to help tell one story for one little piece. But like, yeah. I always think uh, it would be so fun to dive into a con- Like what if I invest in the next three years into growing something that someone else is, obviously I'm doing it with this black and mm-hmm. shit, but yeah, but it's like, First, I don't know. It's it's really easy for me to come and look at someone else's picture and mm-hmm. figure out how to make it better. Very hard for me to do it for myself. You know what I mean? From like, yeah. isn't that weird? That is weird. And I don't I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know. I've always struggled with that. I'm like, damn, what do I need to do? Like, yeah, uh, it's weird. It, it is super. But it's weird because like, I think for some reason you the pressure is off in a different way when you're when you're helping someone. Right. But when you're thinking about yourself, you just have, I think it's because you can hear the other voice in your head. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Well, from a, from a freelance standpoint and like building a brand, it's like for me now doing mm-hmm. it for this, uh, it's just me and Dave and the homies, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. when you think about it like, oh, but if I come into this company that's like got a, they have their own marketing staff, they have their own this and that, mm-hmm. I don't have to do everything. Now I do everything. So when you do everything, you feel like really spread thin. And I think maybe that yeah. makes it difficult to like, you almost are like exhausted of thinking of everything. So then when it mm-hmm. comes to like the creative part, I, I deal with that a lot where I'm like, oh, I really want to do something creative. I'm like, nah, not today. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> I just you did just a bunch out. of shit. Yeah, you get burnt out. I mean, like we only have a limited amount of energy, right? So yeah, like, it's crazy. I yeah. just bought, this is so random, but I, so I'm going to Hawaii like in, a, I don't know, a week or something. Mm-hmm. And so I just bought a 35 mil for my camera just because oh, nice. I, I haven't, I have like a 24, I have like all the normal mm-hmm. lenses, but I really want something that's really compact so I could just carry that thing with me. Just the idea, and this is also a funny stigma that mm-hmm. ties into what we're talking about, but like I had a friend who who had a baby, just to make this whole thing make sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, where the fuck? Yeah. Uh, and she needs the 35 mil. No, <laughs> no, she had a baby and she had all the videos on her phone and she's like, oh, I really want to learn how to edit on my phone. Mm. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, I, I bet you could learn off of like three YouTube tutorials. Yeah. She's like, yeah, but I found this class and, uh, and it's like a five step course or whatever oh, it's word. like a three four hour course whatever yeah and it's like 200 bucks i'm like yeah but you don't need that it's it's already so easy mm-hmm. it's built for you like mm-hmm. it's literally designed for you on iMovie or whatever on your phone yeah, yeah i'm like you don't need that but she's like yeah but i want to and it's like mm-hmm. for some people want they like the comfort of realizing that they invested in something to get mm-hmm. something in return like if i pay for a course i will become editor you know what i mean like right some people think like that and a lot of people don't like to go the extra route or take the long r- drive to get somewhere they want to sh- do the shortcut mm-hmm. and sometimes i feel like oh yeah if i buy this it'll jump start this so i'm like mm-hmm. hey, let me grab a lens uh because i don't want to carry the 24 70 or i make all yeah. these excuses like that i don't want it i'm like maybe that'll allow me to like go be more creative but mm-hmm. for some reason it does give me a little energy boost because it's different change yep. of pace i want to just try something new and it shakes you out of your shit but there's it's very hard um when you're doing things for yourself to like get out of that rut. i don't know why i'm tangenting on this shit. no so no i i think like that's just like a, a cycle all creatives probably yeah. go through like you kind of need to get outside yourself yeah a bit right and also like when you get stuck that's why you need you need like playtime like mm. stuff that isn't too serious yeah you're like oh am i doing this for a big client or am i doing this for like is there a lot of money on the line for right. this that's like you being a technical executor f- and doing it as a service that's not you having fun being creative. Right, right? exactly. No, it stresses you out. When you're so, you so stressed out, like yeah. the end result may be awesome, but like the process getting there is just a lot to handle. And then yeah. that project's done, you go right into the next one. You're just yeah, like, yeah. Ah, you yeah. know what I mean? And it's like, when's the last time you made something just to make it? Right. 
It's crazy. Yeah. What up, creators? I want to remind you about our community at jointhehomies.com. The homies are the squad of legends who support what we do here at Black Window Cream so we can continue to build this platform into the best educational space for content creators on earth. And in return for that support, we give you a bunch of sick perks all month long, like access to our live stream tutorials and hangouts, bonus podcast episodes, and so much more. Check us out at jointhehomies.com. Let's go. They, so coming out of um, this company, like at what point did you s- decide to kind of go rogue? Obviously oh, October. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, actually it was June. It was June. It was, you it was June. The October thing then? But then they asked me to stay through the summer and I left in September. Mm. Um, but it took like it took a long time to figure this out for myself. I had been feeling this way since like December, or November of the previous year, and I talked to friends who had been freelancing, starting their own agencies. Like one one guy, he had a small group of friends, and they were doing a lot of great work for Nike and a lot of musicians. And I was like, I kind of want to be doing that, like more of the production side, because mm. the company had grown from like thirteen people. It was getting close to like almost eighty, a hundred wow. people. Shit. And I was like, my role was changing. I was hiring people, like training others how to do the creative part and like the strategy part. And I was being more of a manager and I was like, oh, this isn't fun. Right, yeah. I, I feel like I still have so much to learn. Like I've been making most things with my phone and it's crazy because Instagram came through one day. They were like, how do you guys make your stuff? And we're like, like this. And they're like, where, where are the lights and the equipment? And we're yeah. like, uh, this yeah, and they're like, for real? We're like, yeah, we got huge windows, so we don't need lights. We just get like natural we just, light. We're good. Yeah, we do it here, and that's it. And they're like, whoa, that's crazy. Um, so I was like, yeah, I've only been using a phone. I know other people who are using these more complex tools. I kind of know how to use them, not really. So I, I feel like I want to keep going. Right. So uh, they were super supportive. They're like, yeah, go for it. Yeah. And so I moved to New York, bought my camera like a few months before then, started freelancing, just small gigs, and then um, got to New York and started trying to figure it out. Yeah, so walk me through your process of like pulling that trigger to move, because New York is a massive city. Like oh, yeah. you said earlier, you weren't yeah. ready for it at the time, so that's yeah. why you moved there. Yeah. Um, obviously you had had a job, so you probably saved up some money, yeah. with it, enough money to be comfortable to go mm-hmm. out there and take a risk, obviously. Yeah. So was the plan to go out there and give it a shot? Were you like, all right, I'm going to dive straight into it and find whatever I can, mm-hmm. and maybe the last resort is get another job, or yeah. just strategically go after being freelance? So I had thought about, like, I, I have almost five years at this company. Yeah. I'm not starting from zero. Like, I have all this experience. The worst thing that could happen is, like, I find another job. Right. Like, I'm not unmarketable right I'm not like bad goods or anything yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was like I can point to all these things um, and then I I sort of made a plan I was like okay like here's my 30 60 90 plan this is what I learned from like the corporate world like, yeah, you, yeah. you have like these mini goals that you have to hit within the this number of days so I set that and I saved money so I knew I was safe for at least three months right um, but I also like crowd I like I made my trip move a campaign like i hit up airbnb car and driver magazine all these people to like kind of essentially pay for my move what (laughs) what so like i uh because in the silicon valley world like making pitch decks and like slides and all the all these stuff to get investors is like really popular so i thought the, the best way to exit would be to like pitch my move so I made a slide deck, a 90 second pitch video and got Airbnb to like fund all my housing through this cross country drive that I did over 16 days. And then I got another like couple of grand just off the internet and strangers and friends. What the hell? Yeah. So, so like but, my but, move like cost me nothing. But like for, for what? Like the Airbnb want like a video? Yeah, they wanted, they wanted photos and they wanted, um, they wanted photos and a couple of Instagram stories. Like photos of just the property? Uh, of the properties I was staying at. I stayed at some crazy places. Uh. Like I stayed at this tree house in Montana and it was, it was like September. I got there, it was raining in the middle of the night and you had to like climb these stairs to get up to the tree house. <laughs> and the next morning it was snow everywhere. What? And I took this crazy photo with my drone. I was like, the first thing I did, I was like, I threw the drone 
threw the drone up and like took this photo and that year it was one of their best performing photos that they posted holy on their, shit they posted it in december and it was like it, it was like one of the top five most liked photos that they had that's incredible yeah Damn. i actually got hit up by like their office in germany that they were like we're going to do a blog post about our top photos of the year we might include yours can you give us permission to use it? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Right. They ended up never making the blog post, but right. it, was cool. it was a cool email to yeah, get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, yeah. man. That's that's such a smart hustle, though. Like, yeah. I think I think finding alternative ways to, like, use things like that to cover costs or whatever is so powerful. I mean, obviously, like, you can hit a brand tomorrow and be like, hey, I'm doing this cool shoot. We'd love to feature your gear, and I'll just get, like, BTS and be using it on the shoots. A mm-hmm. lot of companies, will, like, that's how I got in with DJI. I, I also went the first time so going to hawaii this time i tried to do this like when i was out here in la mm-hmm. poor as shit had no money uh got a buddy pass from a homie like who had a buddy a flight oh, voucher shit. so you just paid the tax i think so you, i think it was like 60 bucks or some shit mm-hmm. anywhere in the u.s but he's like you can have it you can go to hawaii or something I'm like hawaii Wait, is, is it like a physical thing no it was like a uh it was either an email or a code i think uh-huh. and so you just Basically, like if you work on an airline, some yeah. some people get like vouchers or whatever, and they can give them to family, friends, whatever. Oh, so wait. you can fly anywhere in the U.S. for the tax. Mm-hmm. And and I, he said Hawaii, and I was like, really? And my girl was living in Iowa still at the time. I'm mm-hmm. on the floor trying to make it. We haven't really out to see each other. He's damn. like, we should all go to Hawaii and get like a house and just like go. And I'm like, damn, for <sighs> real? That's like such a good idea. It yeah. literally cost no money. Yeah. So we got the flights lined up, all this shit got a rental car whatever and then i got i went on airbnb and literally just messaged everyone that mm-hmm. had a nice house and was like hey i do real estate i do drone work la la la, la. Oh, and no. i just copy paste copy paste copy yeah. paste copy paste yeah and like 10 people hit me up and i just picked the illest house that that they were like down and this chick yeah. had this, this fucking bomb crib it's probably like 1500 dollars a day Shit. she was down she's like yeah whatever that sounds awesome like i'm down like you guys can have it as long as you want you just have to pay like the airbnb fee and the cleaning fee or whatever mm-hmm. i was like bet so it was like 300 bucks that holy shit but then what my dumb ass uh-huh chose the weekend valentine's day weekend to go and when we went to the airport the trick about flying buddy passes is your standby so if there's available seating on the plane you can get oh. on Doug, there, everyone was going to hawaii for valentine's day no. so we literally watched the first flight go and i was like oh no and then we waited like an hour the next yeah. flight that one dipped next flight and then by the end of the day we were like sitting outside at that point i'm like embarrassed you know my yeah. girl's out here i'm trying to like oh fuck like i'm i really moved out here telling her like believe in me like i got an idea yeah, yeah, you know yeah, i'll make yeah. this i'm like about to pay full price for a flight to hawaii because <laughs> i'm like i have no money i'm yeah. like but at the time i was like oh. i'll figure it out later dude we ended up not going and it was like the worst no. but that was the hot if we would have gone yeah, that that been lit. Been, <laughs> it would have yeah. been lit but uh Damn. it was funny me and dave were just talking about it on this hawaii trip because i booked the house and we got a nice spot and then yeah. i was like huh i wonder if i could copy paste this shit and try to get try to get it. yeah like so i hit a couple of people some some chick was like actually down but i was like oh. it's not where i don't want to go out there and shoot shit I'm, yeah yeah I'm you want to be on vacation i want to be on vacation but i yeah. did want to see if the the technique still worked and it mm-hmm. it does i think you get marked out of spam though so mm. but that's that's so sick yeah that, but you i mean silicon valley was it easier to get the deck in front of people at airbnb or was it yeah like, so like being in the marketing department you you know you make friends with people who work in the same departments at other brands sure. so i just asked a friend like hey is this i didn't send it like just blindly i was like hey is this something that they would be interested in or is this just gonna be annoying right and he gave me good feedback and he's like no actually this is pretty cool like you put together something funny yeah and like interesting so he's like yeah just send it to this person and then what was funny about it uh i called it like I, I made a bunch of Fast and the Furious references. I photoshopped myself into a car and like had the whole map. Like I, I planned out the route and like all the national monuments and like parks and things that I wanted to see. Yeah. And uh, I made a lot of just like stupid jokes about avocado toast and other things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stuff that people in Silicon Valley love to laugh at. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, got yeah. it. Uh, and um, yeah, and I made it a tight deck with like. I also showed like deliverables. I was like, yeah. hey, th- these are things that I will provide in terms of, can provide in terms of content if you guys really believe in me. Right. Uh, and they liked it. They were like, yeah, let me, let's just see if there's like room in the budget. And then they're like, yeah, there is room in the budget. We can't give you cash, but we can give you this. That's so like, cool. Cool. 
All right. Damn. Yeah. So did you end up making like a full video of this trip or was it just like kind of like little bite-sized content? It was more like bite-sized content. Um, actually, it's on YouTube, but like it's all broken up into like five to seven minute videos. They're on private now because I'm just like, I want to kind of re-edit. Right. It was more when I thought I was going to like do like vlog stuff. And yeah. like, now my taste has changed and I kind of see myself in a different way. So I'm like trying to like change that. I'm, I'm not sure if I'll make it public again. It's like, I do like showing the growth. Yeah. That's why I like all my Instagram posts, they're all live. Right. But I think with video, I think I need to curate a bit more right. for now. No, yeah. that's dope. Yeah. Okay. So you get to New York and you're kind of just trying it out, right? So yeah. how, how are you going about getting clients there? Like New York's massive. <laughs> so I luckily Everlane had a huge presence in New York. All oh. of our biggest pop-ups and events were there. So I already had like that built-in network and it was just through word of mouth. They're right. like, oh yeah, Red, the guy who did all the social for everyone, he's freelance now. Right. Okay, so it was just a lot of initial conversations, screening calls and stuff. But I also signed up for UCB's sketch comedy writing program. Okay. And I was like trying to learn how, also how to do stand-up. Because <laughs> hmm. I thought these might be interesting skills to have. Yeah, is that terrifying? Super terrifying. Yeah, I bet. So you uh, actually did it? You did stand-up? Yeah, like three times is there is there video <laughs> there is a video is there is, yeah. that, is it it's on youtube on the internet, damn though. it yeah. You're like, yeah, i might release it my friend my friend he recorded the whole set though oh that's um, hilarious and there's like sketches that we wrote like snl style right, sketches right. you know two three minutes that we like performed and stuff but i mean that has only made my career easier now and i if we talk about more actor stuff later in casting um i can that community you know, like making friends in different specialties yeah. super helps. Like Being able to cast later and cast later or do like pr any so sort of production. Sure. Right? Um, You're just saying from like the standpoint of a director, understanding what you want out of a character. Yeah. It's easier to find that person having yeah. done it. Yes. Okay. And especially like, I think you have more empathy. Mm because you're like, oh, this is what you emotionally have to go through to, to like write something or to like, to even perform something. Right. It's not just like you flip a switch and you're there. Like there's a process that yeah, you just go yeah, through yeah. to get to a state where they're like in that character. Yeah, interesting. Um, huh. But yeah, so I was just like consulting, thinking I'd figure it out. And I, at the end of that year, it was like December, my first winter in New York, I made a video about like, all the stuff I did at Everlane and all the stuff I want to do now. And that one YouTube video about like my life up to that point. Right. Um, someone saw it and he's like, yo, I need to connect you with this guy, Paul, who's at Samsung, but he works with this guy named Casey, Casey Neistat. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah. Are you already a fan? I was like, I, I watch all his videos. Right. Uh, are you for real? <laughs> And he's like, yeah, but then um, it was like cold for like two, three months. And then he, after two, three months, we got reconnected and I finally like went to 368 for the first time. Through and this I, connection. Through this connection. And I'd done some agency work, just random freelance stuff. Nothing that like I felt like I could add to my portfolio because it was like super corporate and right. like the style I wanted. And then this 368 thing came about and they didn't need like a video director or anything. They just needed someone who was sort of what I did at Everlane, like this hybrid marketing slash creative role. I was like, yeah, cool, I'll, I'll come by. Kept, it was more like a couple hours a week at first. And then I guess I proved myself after a month and they're like, do you want to be here more full time? Which is who who's saying this, the people from Samsung or, or Casey and his uh, team? It was, so this guy, Paul. Paul. Yeah. I, Paul I was think, from Samsung? Yeah. Did you meet him? Um, is he Casey's partner in 368? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I met that dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So he, Wait, so he used to work at Samsung and now he's full-time 368? Yeah, he was oh, the co-founder. Got it. Okay, yeah. makes sense now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that is, so I was like part of that initial core team yeah. that helped open it up. There was me and like three other people. Right. Yeah. So, so you get there and you're working with like, what was the experience working with Casey for you, I guess, being a fan of his work mm -hmm. and also obviously like your drive out, you're kind of entertaining this vlog style thing. So obviously you were like, yeah. everyone wanted to do what he was doing. <laughs> like, I was just like, am I in this room right now? Like, you know, like how am I here? Like, right. why, why me? Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of like surreal. Um, and you know, like 
all the all the things you learn about him in his videos they're like true in real life mm. and like that the hard work and like the um just like the way he talks about creativity and and like making videos and just you know he he's interested in so many subjects mm -hmm. and he's like very curious and passionate and like intellectual right and then, you know that comes across in the videos but like just seeing it in person you're like oh this this person's real yeah yeah like it's not, not just a like, facade yeah, yeah right uh so it was just crazy being in that space that he he had built yeah you know um and it was just very fast paced so it was kind of similar to like what i had experienced at everlane where it was like you know like i think one thing i learned from everlane was like when when you get a win you don't slow down like mm. you have the wind at your back so keep going and keep like push it even further yeah so that's like kind of the same attitude that was there it was very fast paced don't slow down like high energy all the time right you know? yeah. yeah i saw the pull up bar stats yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, 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 that's it was the same for me too because we, um we had gone out the night the night before i went to 368 i was at mm -hmm. uh we finished my shoot and went to i i like went to the hotel i was whoop bro i hadn't i oh, this yeah, creative I was all last minute it was like a fucking clusterfuck get done with the job go to get the uh, guy can't talk go to the hotel fall asleep or i'm about to fall asleep then marcus mm -hmm. texts me he's like hey we're at this place, like, come meet us for a drink. And uh, I'm like, uh, I'm going to use every excuse because, like, we're in New York and I don't want to yeah. travel anywhere. And I yeah. look and it was literally three blocks from us. And I was like, <laughs> damn it. All right, I'll be there. Yeah, and I, yeah, like, yeah. throw my clothes back on, haul yeah. over there. I meet all the people from um, Corridor, the Corridor uh, Digital, I think is mm. their name. They're, like, YouTubers that mm. they were, like, they were doing the campaign the next day at 368 and Ben agency was there. So we like all got drinks, hung out, whatever, boom, boom, boom. And after that, me, Marcus and one other dude from the Ben agency left and we go to, uh, um, we went to a club and mm -hmm. we were at this club and we we're all just like three nerd dudes that were tired that had <laughs> backpacks on in the club and we're in this bottle service situation, yeah. but it was cool cause I got to meet them. And the next day I swing by 368 on the way to the airport mm -hmm. and I'm like walking around checking everything out and then we're like playing battlefield and then i see casey walked in and it was the same thing too because i'm mm -hmm. like i'd watched all the vlogs and like it was cool and then you see like his office when you're walking up you know what i mean you see yeah. that window the yeah, famous yeah. fucking window yeah. and you're like oh it's weird to see that shit in real life it's kind of yeah. like seeing uh ground zero for the first time <laughs> <laughs> i hate to say that but like but like you know what i mean like my first time in new york and i go and you see yeah, it yeah, yeah, but you had seen yeah. it for so long yeah. on television and you yeah. see that shit and you're like fuck that's crazy and then uh getting a tour at 368 was cool mm -hmm. and then casey walked in and i like saw him in the corner of my eye. i'm like oh dope i'm like I don't want to be that guy and fucking go and mm -hmm. talk to him or whatever. Yeah, I was yeah, like, I'm yeah. we're just gonna be here for another like 20 minutes and dip. Yeah. And then he walked to uh, up to us and was like, Hey, what's up? Like blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Just started chatting with us. And I was yeah. like, Oh shit. And we hung out with him for like the next 45 minutes. He's like talking about all kinds of stuff. I think that the Hills were on fire out here and we were talking mm -hmm. about that. And then yeah. he like, showed us this pizza that he had in the fridge he's like you guys have to try this pizza it's my favorite pizza in new york blah blah blah. <laughs> wasn't that shit that was across the street yeah. whatever the two dollar pizza or whatever yeah and yeah. we're eating pizza and he was like super nice showing us a pull bar all this mm -hmm. stuff and uh and then after after like we had left and i was talking to the homie he's like he's like yo you know uh when i went up to him i was like yo do you know who that guy is over there <laughs> and i'm like wait what and he's like yeah i went up to casey and i was like do you know who that is he's like no i was like that's ben man he shoots for beyonce and jay-z and a bunch of blah blah, blah. and he just hyped me up and he's like oh cool i'll go meet him and then he like came over i'm like that's so ass backwards that like i'm i should have gone to him like i'm in his house you know what yeah, I mean? like, yeah, yeah, but he yeah, like yeah. came over through yeah. that i'm just yeah. like damn that was damn. funny it was so wild that's but you know so what i mean crazy. Yeah. super yeah. nice yeah. fucking guy yeah. like the yeah. nicest dude i'm mm -hmm. i'm glad i got that moment and it's so cool i think anyone who gets a chance to like work side by side you're gonna learn yeah. a lot obviously yeah. about like pushing boundaries that's what yeah. that dude does and it's naturally. not even just like him telling you directly just observing right like how he operates yeah you and just you, get so you just absorb up. so much i bet yeah um so a after doing that like what were some of the i guess achievements that you made while there uh, it was new like you were there at the beginning beginning yeah. okay. i was there like before it opened, mm -hmm. I think they had already, you know, they had already gotten the space and the lease and stuff. But like, I brought in um, some people to help fabricate and build a lot of the furniture pieces in there, uh, like the storefront and like the the TV in the back. And then 
me and Miguel and a couple of other guys, we built out that gaming studio downstairs. Right. And help prepare like the contracts and stuff for, with EA. Right. So a lot of the like the biz dev and partnership stuff. Right. Um, and, and that was I, just off of his relationships and then you guys yeah. dealt with it? Yeah. Got it. Okay. And then, um, and like, you know, people would approach and like Paul was kind of like the, he's moving the, the chess board around. Of sure. Like, okay. Which brands are the ones we, we really have a partnership in a future with? Right. How do we strategically, you know, build this space out? Not just for, cause it, it shouldn't just rely on Casey. Like that right. was like a huge pull, but like, how does it exist itself? Mm. And who are the brands that are really going to help develop this like New York city creator right. community, right? Like it's not just going to be a space for brands to advertise. Yeah. That, 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 that's what it should definitely shouldn't be. Right. Um, so, uh, there was a lot of figuring that stuff out in the early days. And just like, uh, there were pod anchor was a huge partner in the beginning. So they were figuring out like, okay, who wants to make a podcast in New York city? How do we create a space for people downstairs in that, in the bit? I'm sure you saw yeah, it in yeah, the basement area in the back. Yeah. Like, cause they were doing, uh, Casey was doing his podcast with his wife. Yeah. And there were a couple other people who were starting their own podcast as well. Ashley Graham started her podcast down there. Oh, dope. And I think she, she now has it somewhere else, but like, there were it was like this sort of not incubator but like a place you know which is kind of how he pitched it yeah. when he's like announcing what it yeah. was is, yeah, yeah. is that like allowing to bring in creatives yeah. but not everybody yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean not everybody yeah, i'm yeah, sure everybody yeah. thinks they can get in there yeah, but yeah, yeah that is crazy yeah. that's so dope that's yeah. cool to be a part of that and like get that jump start on there and i'm sure yeah. like you being a, a massive asset in that helped play you know a big role in yeah. the rollout it, I, al- it also helped me figure out now like what i need to do hmm for myself right. like, okay these are the things i need to figure out or like if i can do it there why can't i do it for myself right yeah right. that's true yeah um final thing on that uh, just uh, while i'm thinking about mm-hmm. it while we're <laughs> so when he was showing us a pull-up bar right mm-hmm. i don't know who was talking about it and everyone started doing pull-ups or whatever and yeah. challenging each other yeah and he, my so my homie kavika mm-hmm. shout out to kavika he's been on the podcast this dude's a legend with vfx he's oh shit. crazy yeah and uh he, we were there, he was shooting with me and um, mm-hmm. he always takes his GoPro everywhere. He's got like an old GoPro and this is like, oh, his, that's like his main thing of making content for his Instagram, but he mm-hmm. always just getting, he get, he's the king of getting a selfie or like a photo with him in it somewhere. You're like, where the hell was the GoPro? Like oh. he'll always just post something. I'm like, yeah. dude, I didn't even see you put that down last oh, night. Like word. when did you get the shot? Yeah, yeah. So we're standing there, we're talking to Casey and Kavika like, you know, it was just st- was standing by Casey. And at one point he like walked over past me mm-hmm. And he just, he just like whispers in my ear as he passed by and he goes, got it. And then, and I was like, what the fuck you what? say? Like yeah, as he passed yeah, by. Yeah. And then we're like, after that, we hop in the Uber and we're uh-huh. like heading to the airport and he like posts this picture and it was just him like casually standing by Casey. <laughs> <laughs> it was him casually standing by Casey and the, the, the GoPro is definitely like on the table yeah, uh, yeah. in the kitchen, you know? Oh, yeah, And, yeah, yeah. and, and then the he, had, he walked over it, got the photo, walked by me again, got it, and grabbed his <laughs> GoPro. I'm like, you are a weirdo. Like, you're Hella so sneaky. good at that shit. He's so good at that shit, but it was the funniest thing ever. I'm like, yeah, get uh, your content, yeah, man. Yeah, get your yeah, content. Yeah, 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 but yeah. no, nah, it was, it was, that was definitely a cool experience, but um, I, I love that shit. So, so as you leave there, I mean, that's got to be cool that that you have like the insurance on most of like a, some sort of safety net. Like you kind of started part time, they took mm-hmm. you more serious. You were in there probably yeah. full time at that point. Was yeah, it yeah. was it like that? Like you were hired on salary, or was it still yeah, like salary? Okay, so your salary now at this point, which is safe in New York. Yeah, and you decide to leave that mm-hmm. to just completely go freelance again. Yeah. Um. So is that a hard conversation to have with them, especially someone that you like look up to and, and the oh, company yeah. that they're building? Like, I was like, I had so much anxiety over it. I was like, am I like throwing away like the biggest opportunity ever? Right. Uh, but I think what I realized is like, w- I needed to define what was important for me hmm. and like the projects I wanted to work on. And I was like, I'm doing a lot of great like marketing stuff, but it's like all the stuff around the actual thing I want to be doing. Right. So if I'm not doing that, then I should, I need to guard my time. Right. And like, I'll maintain a good working relationship and just say like, Hey, this is what I need to focus my time on. Like Mm. there's a, there's a lot more people who are probably better at this specific like tasks than me, but I want to be doing this because after like three, four years, I want to, this is the, the place I want to be at. Yeah. And if I'm not getting those reps in making these, 
like directing small videos or like starting to work with more actors, like writing scripts, reviewing, like, you know, all those things that these bigger directors do every day. Right. Then I'm never going to get there. Right. So uh, they really respected that. That's dope. Yeah. I remember you, that that was at the same time that we had the chat on the phone and you told yeah. me like, yeah, like low key between us, I'm going to leave 368. Yeah. And I was like, oh word. And then I got the phone, I'm like, that dude's nuts. I'm like, that sounds like a solid spot to be working <laughs> yeah, at. Yeah. Like, well, he's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but since then, it's been fun. It, my favorite thing that you do is Twitter, bro. Yeah. Oh, thank You're you. You're very good at Twitter. <laughs> all right. You, you kill yeah. the game on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone make sure you follow this guy on Twitter because you it's like motivating as shit. Yeah. And you're very in real time, like sharing your experiences in life. Like, mm -hmm. hey, check this thing out. Oh my God, since I posted that video within three hours, I already got two bids. Or I, I, you just did yeah. this like a month or a couple of weeks ago or last yeah. week. You're like, I just got two leads. That yeah. two, the, out of the two leads, one turned into a job or whatever. Yep. And like, you're sharing yeah. this process, which yeah. I think is so dope. Thank you. Um, how, how has being open about your experiences like helped you grow as a creative, especially even getting work? Cause I'm sure if yeah. you're sharing the process, people are like, oh shit, you're talking about writing scripts. We need a script and mm -hmm. we need, you know what I mean? And then yeah. it turns into a job. Yeah, I think like, it's just people want to help. Mm. And if you show them, like you can't just like ask and be like, oh, I need this. Yeah. But if you show them that you've done like 80% of the work and they can provide that little 20% to get you there, right. they will. Yeah. Like I was working on a reel which I haven't released yet. And I was just like, I'm not sure if this is good yet. Mm. And I just asked people like, hey, who works in marketing? Can they take a look at my reel? Cause I'm trying to work with more brands this year. And a couple of people were like, yeah. And then one person in particular was like, actually, I didn't know you were, did all this brand work and like did not just like run and gun stuff. Right. Can you do this one video for us? I was like, yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, I guess I don't need to release this yet because that took up my time for the last month, that right. one project. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Is this then, the project we were just talking about? Uh, yeah, earlier. Right. And then um, the the post you are just talking about where like I got two leads from this, that video, I was sitting on it since like Thanksgiving. This is I, the Saw video. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The homie that cuts. He makes these uh, dope wooden sculptures. Right. And of sneakers and various things like lots of sneaker culture, hip hop, just basically everything dope. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> he makes it out he of makes wood. It. Yeah, and he he got, to, and they're planters actually, because you can put like, uh, you can fill them with water and put flowers, oh, cool. plants and stuff in there. That's So it kind of has like that, this really organic feel that can live in someone's house. Right, right, right. Um, and yeah, so I had shot something for him that this brand was going to edit, so I just like handed over the footage, right. but I was like, I kind of want to make my own cut. Also, they didn't like color grade it. They just uh, left it the I was like, yeah. what? And they had shot some of their own stuff using like the default color profile, and they mixed it. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> shit on you. <laughs> hey, that's sometimes you got to protect it. Yeah. Just do the edit yourself. Yeah. So I was like, what, what would my version of this be? And we recorded like an, a short interview but most of the interview was specific to the brand and the right, project. Right. So I just took the beginning of it and cut together my own. I was like, okay, well, let's make this a, a short one minute. Right. Work. And I gave myself an hour to do it. It took me like three hours to find a song I liked. Right, and then, and then like 30 minutes to edit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I put it out and then um, immediately someone who works at like a really big finance company was like, yo, we want to make a lot of these small documentaries this year on on people who use our product in New York City. And I was like, oh, dope, yeah. Like human interest, like what, do, what does their business do in their neighborhood or right, whatever? Right, right. Like, oh yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah. And then um, I threw out like a budget number that was a lot higher than I'm normally comfortable with. Right. And it's like, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, then, okay, we'll work on the numbers and get back to you. I was like, oh shit. Damn. <laughs> and then someone else was like, hey, uh, what's your day rate for this kind of thing? And I was like, uh, oh, okay. And all these messages started coming in like, oh, I didn't know you did this. And I was like, why did I wait since Thanksgiving? Right, you could have been getting the bag, man. Yeah. <laughs> could have been getting the bag. <laughs> damn, you could have had the Christmas bags. You could have had all <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, damn, I, you know, I think really I just get in my own way. Right, sure. You just well, overthink also, shit. Well, also, you didn't know. You didn't I mean, know Also, that. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. just an edit. It's on the to-do list, but it's, yeah. you don't see it as like, oh, this is going to make me money probably. Yeah. You don't predict that really, you know? Yeah. 
but I also, love that. Yeah. And that, that yeah. made me hit you about doing in the field yeah. episodes. Yeah, exactly. I was like, yo, this shit is fire. Like, yeah. we have a whole idea around this. We should do something. Like, yeah. that's crazy, man. Yeah. And so, someone posted this just today. It was like, the reward for doing good work is more work. Mm. And I was like, yeah, exactly. I love that. So I was like, okay, I got to put out the work that I think is good. Because even if maybe there's a self doubt, I should just share it anyway. Cause then I'll learn. Right. And if people don't like it, then I know I didn't do good enough. Right. And sure. if they do like it, then I'll get more work. Yeah. There's it's a, it's a win either way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Damn. It's, it, it's exciting to see that growth and, and to take the risk and then to be successful in it yeah. and to start to find your success is like, it's terrifying for a lot of creatives. I know that that's always a question that everyone always wants to know is how do I, how do I do it? How do I quit my nine to five? And, mm-hmm. and you know, um, my friend, my friend Scotty has this podcast called Perspective Collective. Mm. I've been on it like twice. It's awesome. Oh, he, this dude is so talented and shit and it, yeah. it's called, um, it's Perspective Collective, but then he, he always talks about your side hustle mm. and he has his full-time job and this is his side hustle. Yeah. It's his podcast and all this stuff. And you have to have, I mean, as a, as a creative, you want to, your side hustle is your side hustle, right? You're picking up a camera as a hobbyist. If mm-hmm. you're getting paid for it every once in a while, it is what it is. Um, and then turning that side hustle into your full-time thing is the scariest thing I can ever imagine for people. Mm-hmm. It was very scary for me to move to LA. It was yeah. very scary for you to take the leap and move out of here mm-hmm. and go up north and then go to New York, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, it's a big It's a big leap. What's your biggest piece of advice that you could give to creatives that are on the fence about making that transition or taking the risk? How would you what would you advise them to do to, you know, based on your experience? I think, uh, work backwards. So think about where you want to end up mm-hmm. and then make a plan working backwards from there. So like say I want to make a hundred thousand dollars this year. Right. Okay. There's 12 months in a year. How much do you need to make each month? Right. How many gigs can you successfully complete in each month? Okay. Uh, what does it take to get a gig that makes that is like 10 K right. or 8k or right something. other people are doing it why am i not doing it what do they know that i don't know hmm. so i think having like the curiosity to really think through yeah and figure out where the holes are and who you can ask to get those answers right i mean the knowledge and stuff is all out there it's just like do you have the determination and discipline to find it and follow through right so it's like and yeah, that that's probably. No, it. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Working backwards is such yeah. a smart move. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, because it's like, at the end of this year, there are people who are going to accomplish certain things. Yeah. So just work backwards from there. Who who do you want to be at the end of the year? And mm. if you miss even a little bit, yeah. You, no one misses a hundred percent. The only way to miss a hundred percent is if you absolutely do nothing. Right. That's actually really hard to do. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's like it's like getting every answer wrong on a test. Even right. if you like just blindly right. do it, you'll get something, yeah. right? Yeah. So like shoot really high and then hopefully you get like 70% mm. or 80% of the way there. Then maybe next year you stretch a little further. I love that. You know? Yeah. Like so you get you and think about it like long term. Right. 40, 50 years from now. Do you want to still be doing this? How do you get better through your entire life, not just one year? Right. Because one year, I fucked up a lot. You right. Know? Like I probably left so many opportunities or messed up so many times, and I'm gonna continue to mess up. Right. But like, as long as you're getting a little bit better each year, I think it's it's fine. Yeah, totally. Yeah. No, I completely agree, man. Yeah. We we just tried experimenting with that, and like going to the new year, writing all of our goals on on mm-hmm. paper, and yeah really outlining like where we want to do it. And you earlier talking 30, 60, 90, like yeah. really trying to set those goals. But if you can check any percent of them off, that means you're doing something. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they just transfer to the next year, the next yeah. day, the next yeah. week, you know? So that's, that's super dope. Oh, uh, also having a dope group chat with like three friends hmm. that you can share even like the scariest shit with. Yeah. I think because it's like, it's gotta be people who you really trust right. who can like, help you know get your head right and like remind you of where you need to be right i love that yeah huh shit it's really dope yeah um can we talk about the project you're working on right now sure yeah so you're you're currently you just directed a it's a is it a campaign or is it just a one-off video it's a it's a three a series of three videos for like this new feature that um this company anchor is going to be launching right and which i didn't know anchor is owned by spotify now yes so That means that app's blowing up. Is that so? Is the idea because you can talk about what the campaign is, or what the mm. video is about? Because I thought it was really cool what you mm. were making. But is Anchor 
Anchor to me was like a platform to just record podcasts and upload them and then it just gets shared to like Apple Podcasts yeah, and Spotify. Yeah, they help with the promotion and everything. Right. But it's like a, it's like they can, they help you do everything from like start to finish. Right. Um, from the sense of like, they make it very easy to record podcasts. Yeah. Like their whole thing is like this whole setup could be done with just a phone. Right. Um, and it's like, they're just trying to reduce the friction for like people to have these conversations. Yeah. So and with that, that's what, so this campaign specifically, that's what you set out to like explain basically. Yeah. So they're launching a new feature that makes it even easier. Like say, I mean, you have many guests on this podcast, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, before if you were using the anchor platform, like this person would have to sign up, make an account and like, you know, type in their email, do all this stuff. And they'd have to download the app and be on their phone. Now, like you just hit them with the link. To interview or to listen? To interview. Okay, right. So if yeah. I had a guest over, yeah. Sk- like how people do it over Skype or something. Yeah. Okay. So now like you would just hit them with a link and as soon as they click it and it, it'll open on their phone, their laptop or their tablet and it'll start recording automatically. Right. Like they don't need to make an account or do anything crazy. It's just like they can do it on the fly super easy. So what was your approach to creating this video? Like how did you go about it? So they gave it? me a pretty good brief. Yeah. They wanted to show like how people who aren't even in the same room can easily make a podcast. Right. That was kind of the brief. And they were like, come up with different ideas of conversations. So wrote like three different scripts. We went through a bunch of iterations. And I think what we ended up doing is we were showing these um, vin- three vignettes. And there are these close up, they start close up where it looks like people are just in the same room having a conversation. Right. But then by the end of like, it's, it's only 15 seconds. By the end of the conversation, it goes out wide and it shows that like, oh, these are th- people in like three different cities right. talking about like this football game or like. Like they're all on the same podcast basically. They're all on the same podcast, right. but they're in like yeah. three different places. Right, that's cool. So, uh, and to get the viewer's attention, I kind of like, I, I admire Edgar Wright a okay. lot as a director. Yeah. Uh, so I took like his sort of style of that crash zoom in the beginning of like, that's our suit up sequence for the podcast. Like, mm. okay, we're, we're, you know, there's an astrology vignette that we did. And it's like getting out the tarot cards, the light and the candles, pouring the tea right. for the TV. <laughs> <Yeah. and> so, <laughs> yeah, nice. so it's like a crash zoom sequence of all this stuff happening. Yeah. And then it goes into the, it goes into the, welcome to the, uh, welcome to the podcast, blah, 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 right, right. you know, and they talk about like their signs and stuff. So was that, were those real podcasts or were you just making fake podcasts? For no, the- I, I, I wrote scripts of fake podcasts. Right. That's so. <laughs> what if people try to go subscribe, man? <laughs> These commercials so that, pop. Was, that was one idea. I was like, why don't we actually like help three people, um, Promote. start their own podcast Oh, okay. using this new feature. And it was like, well, that could work, but like, you it's know, finding hard. the people, yeah. like all the stuff. Are, are they, they really re- going to do it? Re- you know, we've got to rely on them to keep making episodes. Like, yeah. Okay, let's just script it. And it's not as much about their actual podcast as it is like the setup yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So it That's doesn't really go too cool. far in. So, yeah. w- so when, because right now we're recording this is the end of January. Yeah. Those should drop, by the time this episode drops, the, the spots will be out, but then those will just be available where on like, it'll YouTube be on Instagram, their blog and probably YouTube. Cool. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. So that's definitely like what you're setting your heart on is like doing campaigns and, and directing pieces of content for brands like that. Yeah. Uh, definitely more scripted work. Um, it was so much fun working with actors, like being on set and like, they're asking me, okay, what's the motivation of this character? I was like, it, it's, it's one line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, okay, well, let me come up with this backstory yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, it was like, I think all the things I've been working towards over the years, I mean, it's been like two years of freelance. Yeah. Really? Uh, I did the math, actually. I left my job in September of 2017. I've been freelance for 26 months, but 13 of those months I had done these sort of full time stints. So, really. A little right. over a year of freelance. Yeah, sure. Um, so now it's like, okay, I feel like I've learned so much from dipping my toes in and dipping back out to like, okay, I need to focus on doing all this. Right. Yeah. That's dope, man. Yeah. God damn. That's sick. Yeah. Um, I So I do a Q&A experience. I want to let my community ask you mm-hmm. questions. Our, yeah. Shout out to our Patreon people. Word. Um, but I feel... Do it, have I missed anything before we go into this? I feel like we covered a lot of good stuff, uh, dude. You, 
No. What a wild journey, bro. Yeah. No, it's crazy. And it, I, it feels like it's getting crazier. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're going to drop these three videos. Those three videos will catch the wind of 10 more people and then they're going <laughs> to yeah. need you to do videos yeah. for them. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Are you, how, I guess that's a good question. How are you, how are you building your team? Like, um, cause the problem, this is the problem mm -hmm. is that you'll start getting so much work and yeah. it stacks on you and you can't yeah. do it all. So you're going to yeah. have to rely or dish it out. And I do it all the time. Hey, can you come shoot this? Nope. And then I send it to whoever, whatever, mm -hmm. or when you do productions of that scale, how are you kind of building your crew? So right now I think there's one person I can trust to be my DP. Right. Uh, there's probably a couple more, uh, but I just haven't worked with them yet. Mm. Uh, but I think the biggest thing right now I need is a producer, right? Someone that is going to handle like the client communications, booking locations, communications with talent, just all the admin paperwork stuff. Yeah. Cause I did it for this shoot. It's a fucking nightmare. You fucking just have to, nightmare. you carry so many things in your head oh, worst, cause bro. you're thinking about like, okay, what's the schedule? Are yeah. we on time? Next location. Do we need to? check in early for load in and check out later for load out and like all the communication on the back end. There. I got someone for you, bro. I'm gonna link you up with my okay. girl. She's <laughs> yeah. fucking beast. Yeah. She runs New York. She oh, knows dope. everybody. Okay, she, word. Yeah, I'm gonna link okay. you for, for sure. sure. Great. Uh, but yeah, it's, that, it's just finding and building like a solid foundation yeah. of people that you can rely on. And then like in my head, I'm like, okay, like is this frame correctly? What's the, we're using tungsten lights on this shot. So we gotta change the color temperature. I'm like, and like balancing that plus all the others, I'm like, I was going crazy. Dude. Yeah, yeah, I feel it. I know <laughs> yeah. how. Yeah, I know how it goes, man. It's just <laughs> pressing. Yeah. Um. All right. Cool. Patreon Q and A experience. Cool. Um. Neutral P says I, I told him all that you were coming or whatever, and he said mm -hmm. so much dope work. So keen for this podcast. Dope. Sounds like he's from Australia. <laughs> keen. <laughs> yeah, keen. I'm sorry. Yeah. Please ask separately. Okay. Two questions for you. Have you ever felt like you were held back by any of the big brands to show your full potential? If so, would you cop it? Would you cop it? on the chin oh would you cop it on the chin or would you try and wiggle in your creative aspect so would you take the l and let them have like stump your creative control mm -hmm. or would you just uh would you say fuck them and <laughs> just do it anyway <laughs> uh i mean like most i approach most client like projects like they're hiring me for technical execution of an idea they have right. i will try to sell hard my vision but ultimately, like they're a customer, and I need to make them happy because, like, I want more work. Yeah, right? facts. Like, I get a lot of fulfillment out of my <coughs> own personal projects. Right. That's where I get to express myself fully creatively. Mm. So I don't need to do that with all of my client projects as much. But if they hire me, and like, you do a sort of screening process. Like, yes, I want to work with so-and-so right. but if they want to work with me it's like i gotta make sure that like it's gonna be a good working relationship sure do we have the same as like vision for the type of work we're gonna do and if not then like you just gotta say no yeah absolutely yeah I, we were just talking about zoom transitions before we started the podcast and there, i did a disney edit for yeah. disney or whatever and i did the whole thing and it was fire and then they were like can we do a zoom transition here that's cool like one of the top people and i was like uh <sighs> I like added it in. I'm like, yeah. I hate this, but okay. I'm like, yeah. but you just have to let them have that little yeah, win as exactly. long as everything else can stay the same. I'm like, cool, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, the second question he had was any red hot tips that you might have to help with reaching out for bigger jobs as a freelance creator? I don't know if red hot was a playoff your name or if mm. it's just going off the candy. <laughs> I would probably say like make make something dope that's personal work mm. that will like the video i made uh, that was one minute long right that was not like an ad for a brand it wasn't like spec work like a fake ad or anything like that it was just something that i've been wanting to do i love like telling stories about people who who do cool creative things right and i've been wanting to make more short documentary style videos of my friends right so i just did my first one minute version of it and people re it resonated with people yeah so I would say do that and oh, yeah. also um there's more like a technical side too like you know every every year they break up their marketing budgets into quarters so you got to think about like okay if it's a video game company or like a fashion company when are they making their big releases okay they already have their plan how are you gonna make their plan better right 
or uh, how are you going to add value and help them make money or like think about like their shoes and what they need. Mm. That's what I would say. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. No, that's great. Um, Josh Adams says, I'm sure most of your work is directly commissioned now, but when you started out, how did you approach cold emailing potential clients? Did you already have thought out ideas for projects with them or did you just try to make um, an initial basic connection first? I love even this to piggyback off that last one, making mm-hmm. connects. It's like you doing the Photoshop thing right out the gate to get the first job, putting yourself on their website. And then you in your pitch deck with Airbnb photoshopping and adding yourself to cars and like finding creative ways to stick out versus just an email or a text. You like mm-hmm. you go above and beyond to fit that. I love that. I love when every creator always tells about them doing spec work and all this stuff that that always is like a foundation to get mm-hmm. noticed. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Um, just that was my takeaway from that. But uh, yeah, was there anything early on that you were doing outside of that that would uh, make the connection with people? Uh, so I actually haven't had to do much of that. Yeah. Because I had worked full time somewhere and gotten a good enough reputation, and the brand had its own uh, <laughs> reputation as well. Right. That like work just came in. Yeah. And it was more like us filtering through opportunities. But now this is the first year where I really. I think I need to have a stronger vision for myself and the work I want to be doing. So now I'll be doing a lot more like making a spreadsheet. This is my dream client list. Right. Who do I know there? What do I think I can make with them or what do I want to make with them? And like sitting down on a Saturday afternoon for like three hours and really thinking this through. Yeah, right. And having like a clear vision for, do okay, I made a book about Kanye, but like could I direct... A music video right like, can i be like spike jones and make all these dope things right not just music videos but films too sure um so and also i don't want to do just client work i want to do original work too so it's like how many client jobs do i have to do this year and how many personal projects can i make that will also generate income right so yeah i don't know if i'm answering this question no it's good it's cool yeah, yeah no it's yeah. definitely an interesting thought process yeah. it's like yeah. and also just the creating the um the what's the word I'm thinking of like some shit that you learn in the military when you become uh, like you make it a a, a thing uh, damn why can I not think of this word Mm. you said go to a coffee shop or go do some sit down for three hours and just focus on your list and and figure out how you're going to execute it creating the what strategy? the strategy? No. Uh, uh, being like militant about like, I will do this and sitting down and you actually stick to it and you, and you really focus in on three. Some people, it's like easy to think about. Like it's easy for mm. me to be like, Oh, I need to think of since we're talking about why, yeah. what's my itinerary and I'm yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm going to get to it. And then I get mm. home and I'm like, I'm going to do it tonight. And then by the mm-hmm. time I'm home, I'm tired and I just like <laughs> zone out and you don't yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like really setting the, um, the drive and determination to do it and then actually mm-hmm. follow through in with it. It's like very, tough to do but if you can do it that's just one step you know what i mean that, yeah that's super powerful um damn this was this was solid man we chatted yeah. for a minute yeah we, for an hour 45 oh shit yeah, for damn. real yeah Yo. which is about the perfect damn. time to do this because yeah. all right so i always tell all my guests mm-hmm. you, i give you an opportunity to pick a hashtag right mm. so if you're listening to this on audio understand that we have a youtube version of it too so you can watch our beautiful oh, faces Lord. on camera um so what i'm going to tell everyone to do is you're going to pick this hashtag they're going to go to the youtube video they're going to mm-hmm. find this on youtube and they're going to comment and use the hashtag and this hashtag is there so that you and i both know that they listen to the podcast all the way through the, oh, the only way they write in this hashtag is if they got to here right now oh, and sure. then i also want them to jot down a takeaway that they got from this interview what, what's Lord. one thing that they learned from you okay. um so that's what you have to do listener viewer and you get to pick the hashtag right now. What do you want it to be? Oh, I, I have to make it yep, up too? Yep, yep, It's my favorite oh, part of the podcast because everyone just like, is like, what? Uh, hashtag double, double animal style. <laughs> oh shit, you're going to in and out right now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. He's going straight to in and out You can tell when a dude just landed in LA and has to go straight to the spot. Damn, yep. double, double, in and out style. If you don't know. Animal style. Oh, double, double, in and out, animal style. That's the whole hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> so jot that one down, all right? Damn, now I need to go get a number two, bro. Oh, I'm I know, so bro. hungry. Yo, what's your order there? Uh, I usually just do the double. I'll do the number two, animal style on the burger and the fries. Oh, word. I'm pretty simple, bro. And I get I get the chocolate shake Ooh. instead of the soda. Nice, nice, yeah. nice What about nice. you? I do uh, number one, animal style, extra toasted bun. <sighs> It's it's nice, dude. Okay. 
and then uh, animal style, no pickles. Okay. And then well done fry. Okay, I need to do the toasted and the well done fry. That yeah. sounds fire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's bomb. All right, noted. That's our last thing <laughs> yeah. we're going to tell you guys about. It. I appreciate you coming doing this, man. This was for awesome. Sure. Yeah, thank yeah, you so thank much you. for coming straight yeah. off the flight. Yep. Oh, this is so time, good. Man. No, all right, cool. Yeah. We'll do it again tomorrow <laughs> and the next day. The yeah. next day. All right, that's it. All right. Peace. That's it for episode 158. Huge thank you to Red for coming on the show. We appreciate you, bro. Thank you to everyone that listened to this all the way through. We love it. Uh, If you drop your biggest lessons that you got to take away from this episode in the comment section on our YouTube channel, make sure to do that. And if you want a chance to ask any of our future guests a question during the Q&A experience on the podcast, just go to jointhehomies.com and submit your questions now. Follow us on Instagram at Black Window Cream to catch highlights from new episodes every single Wednesday and Sunday. That is it. We appreciate y'all. Have a great week. Um, Keep creating, as we always say. And we'll see you in a few days, you bitch.